Hey guys, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids. We are currently at prompt number nine, with this hybrid being a lizard and a shark. And for any new people, these are prompts that we do every couple of weeks or so. Just some fun, simple ideas to get the community up and going, get some artwork, get some drawings, and overall just have fun. And for this part, you guys have given me 84 individual submissions to check out, and that is an incredible amount. Put into perspective, I normally do an average of 30 per part. Today, I'm discussing 84. So I'm gonna cover what I can, I'm gonna try to be quick, but I'm gonna try to give everyone the attention they deserve. But let me say this has been an absolutely incredible journey. I'm kinda scared, we might have to do a part four, but I'm gonna do what I can. So, to start things off with, we have the Cornucoprion by Somi. This is an absolutely gorgeous piece of artwork with a lot of lore. I do recommend pausing, taking a look. She's put a lot of thought into it. It's extremely well thought out, and the concept itself looks amazing. It reminds me a lot of Arvelus, or RJ Palmer, the Pokemon Monster Hunter artist. Absolutely incredible. The texturing is beautiful, especially with the scales. I love the colours, very nice warm colour palette, and the jaw in particular is very creative. And following Somi, we have Poophead27 with the wing headed shark. I absolutely love the one in the left hand corner with the little scree title, but I also like the overall comic panel composition to this. It does a really nice job of highlighting each individual side, each angle. I really like how long and slender it is, and I like how exaggerated the hammerhead actually is because it really fits a long, slender body. And the whole design looks quite majestic. And next up, by Unstable Mystery, we have this adorable little family, including the little man who is telling his little story, and the mama is tired because babies. The whole thing's really cute. I actually really like the purple colour palette, it just makes it stand out. I think the little expressions on the babies are really cute, and there's just something really just sweet and innocent about the whole thing that I think is just lovely on its own. Next up we have Jacob Sola with two cute and rather elegant looking creatures. I especially really like the faux eyes around the shoulders, and the warm colour palette really complements the cuteness. And next up by Cinnamon Sage, we have the Spiny Dogfish and Monitor Lizard. I really like the eye, I find it very striking, and I also really like the paddled talons at the front. The whole design somewhat reminds me of a Mertzor, but with a much more delicate appearance, complemented especially by the soft curvature at the tip of the tail. And next up by the Plague Bringer, we have the Iguana Shark. I really like the colour palette and the texturing, especially the white fuzziness around the snout and the underbelly, and in particular all the wavy cyan lines patterning the back and the arms. It reminds me a lot of light reflecting off the shimmering water, and I can imagine this creature camouflaging in shallow waters. And next up by Bacon Place, we have this rather striking looking terrestrial creature. I imagine a Komodo or a Monta Lizard along with a shark, with great big sharp teeth and a very large, stocky and formidable looking body. And next up we have Somi again with the horned toad and white tipped reef shark and the helicorpion. An absolutely stunning design, I really like how all the various stripes complement all the various spikes. The entire thing feels very ridged, very patterned, and it all just comes together very nice and consistently. It gives it a lot of texture and it also makes it look very ancient and very battle worn. And then another one by Somi is the Burton Legless Lizard, Goblin Shark, Frilled Lizard, Lantern Shark, Green Iguana and Horned Toad. This entire thing just emanates absolute epicness. I really love how it's in battle with what appears to be a lionfish cobra, which is really cool to see as well. But as I said, the entire thing just looks very striking, very epic. I love the moody colour schemes that really sets a tone for the overall battle going on, especially with all the thrashing waves and the dark clouds, and the expression of the creature's face and all the subtle flecks of gold on the scales, the whole thing is just illuminated incredibly well. It's mean, scary, looks abyssal, and is wonderfully dramatic. And next up, we have this absolutely adorable and gentle looking one by Filey. I love the overall posture and how the creature is sort of curving mid-stride. It just has like a very gentle appearance and I think it's complemented by its underbelly being exposed and the little wing-like fins trailing behind it. I also really like the subtle browns along the back and I also like the creatures accompanying it in the setting as well. Next up we have the Dragon Queen with a very cute looking lizard and a very formidable looking nose, of which it uses the scent prey underground in the scorching desert sands. I like the overall colour palette, I especially like how the bright yellow head contrasts against the blue body and all the varying coloured stripes. I can imagine a brightly coloured head being used for display purposes, and I have to say I especially like the way it's just encroaching upon the rock. Something about that just seems really sweet. And coming up next we have Chromatic Glass with the Black Tip Reef Shark and Parentine Guana. I really like all the subtle construction lines on this, especially around the gills, the head and the torso. I also really like how slender the entire hybrid looks, which is a great combination of line art, form and the colours, especially just the shading and the lighter underbelly. And the subtle bits of lighting on all the black tips really do give it just that extra dynamic. And next up by Genipothia with a Mosasaur, Dragon, Marine Iguana and Blacktip Reef Shark. Seeing this underwater next to a bunch of volcanic vents, I gotta say it's really intimidating but it looks so cool. I love the construction of the face, I especially just love the two sets of jaws inside, really menacing, and the scale work is absolutely stunning. In addition to the mottled patterning of the white underbelly and neck and all the black tips around the tails, the claws and the wings. 
Coming up next by 404 Name Not Found, we have a rather unique set of entries. And as 404 has mentioned, these are their amphibious lizard walkers that serve as a carrier platform for shark submarines. Now, just like before, there's not a whole lot I can say in regards to vehicles, as it's not really my forte, but I can massively appreciate the lighting, the gradients. The first one looks overall just very spooky, very murky. I can imagine this one being either a dawn or dusk in the polar ice scouts, perhaps underneath an ice sheet or underneath a glacier. So you have barely a trick of lights coming through to an otherwise very gloomy environment. The next one looks even more abyssal. Again, give me a bit of a arctic vibe. I think all the different light sources is also very impressive, especially along all the darkened black panels, as that kind of contrast can be quite intimidating and also quite confusing with multiple light sources, and I think 404's really nailed it here. And again, with all the muddied gradients as well, kind of gives like a bit of a low quality film appearance, which is very fitting in an abyssal environment. Their third one displays some of these shark submarines ejecting from the lizard walker. The overall perspective of size in this one is fantastic, as it makes the amphibious walker just look that much larger and impressive. And the large red legs as well is a really nice contrast that really becomes very clear later. And once again, an awesome example of light sources, especially the two lights at the top and bottom of the mouth, if you will. And I believe I can see another two within the inner part. It kind of almost resembles jaws of a motorcycle in a way, the multi-layered jaws or sets of teeth, which is very interesting to derive from a vehicle. And for 404's fourth mission, we get a close-up on the shark submarines, which has a very nice and sleek shape and really does sell that whole shark silhouette quite nicely. On the fifth one, we can see one of their shark submarines breaching from the waters, and I must say the technique of all the splashes of water, especially those dripping off the texture of the submarine, look absolutely fantastic. Very subtle, very smooth, very clean, and also having the point of view somewhat submerged between the water and the air, so you can see both sides of the submarine, just gives it a really awesome dynamic, and especially the murky underwater underneath. And then for 404's sixth mission, we see a close-up of the amphibious lizard walker, which now really does resemble lizard much more. And again, like I mentioned earlier, the great big red legs, very iconic. They look very powerful, a really awesome contrast against a very murky Arctic environment. And the entire thing just seems so grandiose. And I also just want to point out the reflections on the surface of the blue is again, just very, very impressive. And then for the final seventh one is a lizard walker submerging back into the water. Once again, the reflections are just so fantastically done, both on the surface of the walker, but also on a reflection of the ocean. The one thing I can really compliment on just every single one of these submissions by 404 is the lighting, the atmosphere, the texture. It's always got a very painted look. Everything's very moody, very murky, and it's just very thought-provoking, kind of emotional. I think expressionism is a term, actually. And I think that is all just very, very clever and a really cool use of interpretation of the prompt. And I think having all the overall different submissions and angles really does complement each other more and just paint a much larger picture. Really fantastic work. And next up we have the Draki Lady. Last week we saw a close-up of her earless monitor, Xenacanthus, and black tip reef shark. And this week she has created a scene of her hybrid with her character Velos. And I know Draki has spent a very, very long time on the environment, on the background, the ocean, the air, and I have to say, all that time she spent on it really did pay off. The just overall scene is absolutely beautifully stunning, incredibly scenic, so warm, so atmospheric. I love the way the light bounces off for all those various surfaces, including the two characters, but also the ship itself and the clouds. This also gives a really cool perspective of the size of our hybrid as well. A couple more angles and colours that we hadn't seen before, and especially the way it must feel towards creatures like Velos. I'd also like to point out a bit of texture in the ocean as well, along with all the various shades and colours, but the ocean texture just seems a little bit turbulent in a way, perhaps chaotic, which really kind of adds to the scene even more in my opinion. I find that if I was to summarise this entire submission into one word, the word that really comes to mind is powerful. Powerful technique, powerful colours, powerful lighting. It's just awesome. And then as a bonus to Draki's submission, she's actually used her hybrid as part of her own comic series, which you can find here, especially on the upper right-hand panel and around the center. And I gotta say, the entire thing really is quite interesting. And I'm sure that if you'd like to, you know, keep up to date with Draki's comics, she is in our Discord server. I'm sure you can go have a word with her. And next up we have Galaxy Reach with the Mexican Mole Lizard and Great White Shark. They mentioned they took a more earthy approach to this one, which I can definitely tell. The entire scene feels like it's somewhat underground and it's a very, very interesting contrast compared to, I think, probably the majority of all other submissions we've had so far. Not only that, but the whole earthy scene does really paint for a nice colour palette, really warm colours, which really suits the theme here of a mother creature looking after her young. It seems very warm, very close and somewhat cuddly. And I especially really like Galaxy's choice of technique in regards to shading the creature and a little bit of yellow and orange here and there just give it that you know extra bit of warmth and depth 
And next up, we have another spore creation by Miva. This is a creature I can imagine being absolutely massive. I don't know why. I think it's because of the size of the legs and the overall proportions. But I imagine this thing being just a very large, formidable predator. Lumbering around, devouring whatever he can with those great, big, scary jaws. We've seen a fair few creatures with front arms and no legs. It's very interesting to see a theropod kind of stance with the back legs but no front arms. It does have the fins, of course. But as I said, it's a very interesting contrast. And I think it just looks for a very unique and original design. And of course, I always have to compliment made for of parts, especially in regards to the gills and the overall structure of the mouth. And next up we have Dinosaur King with another submission from, I believe the game is called Impossible Creatures, showcasing a Hammerhead Shark and a Komodo Dragon, of which they have named the Hammeragon. Quite an interesting design, and I have to say it now really makes me want to see more Hammerhead designs just in general. And coming up next by Caliber Light, we have Larry the Great Shark Lizard, a Komodo Dragon, Iguana, Great White Shark and Tiger Shark. Dude, I just love, I, I gotta say, I really like the overall darker outlines. I'm not sure what it is. I think it just makes it really pop against the white of the paper. But the really dark outlines just really give it, and ironically, so much more edge. And I think it looks really fantastic. Especially all the stripes are going down the side of the entire creature's body. All the bits of outlining around the fins and the arms. All those great big spikes really complementing the stripes. And especially around the, the doolap, I think it's called, with the neck as well. And I really liked the overall very long design of the creature. And the combination of fins into the arms just, again, looks really badass. Another extremely gorgeous design by Calibre. And next up we have Theo with the Australian Angel Shark mixed with the Brachiosaurus. What a fascinating combination of creatures. And now I want to see lots more Brachiosauruses or sauropods in general just with these great big... I guess you could almost call it robes in a way, or cloaks. With the very large fins of the Angel Shark kind of splaying out around it. It's a really fascinating creative idea and it just looks awesome and I do really like the addition of the little bird's nest on the back of the brachio and the Spinosaurus in the middle chilling between the pair. Very, very creative. And next up we have a trio of hybrids by Firegator First Day. First of all, sporting a hammerhead lizard. Those are some scary needle-like teeth on the hammerhead and I especially just like the way it's kind of stalking and prowling and curving. Next up we've got a much bulkier one which I can assume is probably a great white shark. Unfortunately, I can't really see the neck very well due to the lighting but it feels like it's either a little shading or it's got perhaps like a bit of spikes around the neck. This creature reminds me of a crocodile in which I can imagine it being somewhat lumbering but very powerful. And for the third one by Firegator, again a bit tricky to tell due to the lighting but what I can appreciate is a very very spiky chin, the row of spikes on the back and the big stripy tail. And coming up next by the Mighty Mango we have this adorable leopard shark and blue tongue skink. The tongue... <laughs> <laughs> it really sells it to me. The entire creature just feels like one of those very um, very round, very cute kind of punchy creatures. And the tongue just really sets it perfectly for me. I do like the overall shape. I think the shape really complements it and it's perfect for a skink. I also just love all the subtle patterns. I like how the patterns are actually faded for a change. It just really emphasizes the whole soft texture even further. Especially with the subtle bits of lighting around the fin, the side of the body and the head. And yet meanwhile the strong highlights just offer a really nice contrast both in terms of the lighting but also in terms of technique. An adorable creature of some really awesome illustration techniques. And next up by Shunky, we have the Daisy Padilla Selachimorpha, which is a big eye thresher and armadillo lizard. I really like seeing the overall dossier design for Shunky's submission, and I really have to respect Shunky's ability to keep on trying all these very, very different themes and styles and genres and mediums for all of her submissions so far. It's very, very commendable, and I think she's done an absolutely fantastic job with this one as well. The overall texture into the page, the bit of a coffee stain, and the fingerprints really just give it like a bit of a ancient, used and worn appearance. And the creature itself is also wonderfully illustrated. I especially like all the crosshat shading in conjunction with the white highlights. I also just really like all the scales and segmented body plates, especially just all the much larger plates around the body, but also just around the head and the tail. All these different and segmented parts, it just all looks really awesome. I think the entire design really comes together wonderfully. And I find it very impressive how she's managed to fit in the shark parts throughout the creature in between all the segments. It shows that she's put a lot of thought into just where to place these parts and how to make it all fit together. And next up by Anonymous, we have the Goblin Shark and the Gecko. They're cute at first sight, but they bite, which definitely comes across very clearly in the illustration here. The top left one looks absolutely adorable, the little tongue, the great big sparkling eyes, and then the bottom, how I think his eyelid just kind of covers his eyes, his teeth procure out, and the entire thing. It's just an amazing contrast, I think it's wonderful. I really like the webbed feet, and I especially like the very large paddle tail, and I think just adding a bit of round curvature to the dorsal fins is a very nice touch. And next up, we're gonna submission by Data Chicken 85's little sister. Their submission is a basking shark and flying lizard, which is known as the Orange Glider Shark. 
It's very small compared to most other sharks. It can pick up sand in its large mouth and sieve out food with its teeth. And if threatened, it will flatten out its body and push blood to the outside of its fins to scare off predators. That is a really cool design. The choice of colors is really interesting. And I guess it works out in fact if it's got a threat display linked into its fins, it makes sense that it'd be a bit more on the red side. And I love just the overall texture of all the scales. Very meticulously drawn and colored in as well, especially the patterning around the neck and the base of all the fins and all the needle-like teeth that really complement the whole sieving technique for getting food. Another solid and gorgeous design. And next up I saw me with a change of pace, we've got a more humanoid design of a black tip roof shark and a marine iguana with the caption, oh hey, nice day at the beach, eh? This is fantastic and I have to say I really do love the face more than anything else. The entire scene is really cool, the design of the creature is gorgeous and I especially just really like the markings around the, the spike and fins along the back, the tail and the tip of the tail as well in particular. Kind of like makes it feel a bit like tattoos but also quite not. But as I said I really do like the face. We've seen Bruce do an anthro shark in the previous submissions with Bruce and Bruce was like a very large mean scary looking creature. But she's managed to create an absolute polar opposite with the face of this creature. It looks gentle, friendly, it looks inviting, and I think it's very impressive to create that kind of expression on a creature, especially one that is, you know, part shark. And next up we have Delcius One with a Viper Dogfish Shark, Thresher Shark, and Flying Gecko. I love the bioluminescence on this one, really gives like a bit of an eerie kind of cave or abyssal feel, especially the gums are displaying and those black needle teeth are really quite creepy and complements it very nicely. It's a nice contrast compared to the bioluminescence that have such dark teeth. I also really like the markings and the position that the creature is in, and I'm a really big fan of the translucent fins that are stretching between like all the membranes and such. It looks absolutely fantastic and again like another really eerie design. And next up by Frost Dragon 365, which is based on the Helicoprion and Frilled Lizard. The Helicoprion is a new unique fauna that spends most of its time in warm tropical waters. However, it's been known to go on land despite being very slow due to being mostly aquatic and bask in the sunlight. So Frost Dragon has created two different illustrations for their creature. First of all, we see a 2D drawing, which I think looks absolutely wonderful and I really like the color palette. And then in their second submission, we can see it as a spot creature, which adds a bit more dynamic, and you can especially just see the very large frills coming from behind the head of the creature, along with the big scary teeth and a very large powerful tail. And next up by Sly, we have their own interpretation of an anthro shark lizard hybrid. This one's sporting a black tip shark and a frilled neck lizard. And I mentioned this one's an investor, which I'm pretty sure there's some metaphor to be taken out here. But overall, again, I really like the design. Just like with Sommies, Sly's done a very good job of creating like another nice gentle expression. And the frills are a very nice touch. And I also like the thoughts placed into the clothing, especially around the sleeves of the shirts, which allow the fins to procure, but still have the creature look, you know, perfectly well dressed. Which I think is a very good balance to, you know, think about and strike. And that'll have to do it for this current round. I apologize if my speaking was off. It has been very tricky getting through these, but a lot of really incredible and absolutely amazing designs. Now, we do have more to cover. There's going to be a part four, but I don't want to shove everything into one large video just for the sake of getting it done. I'd rather, you know, take my time and go through it all properly. So the plan is I'll be announcing the 10th prompt in a moment and we'll be having a bonus round of the remaining shark submissions coming up shortly after this. So speaking of which, Prompt number 10. This shall be the final one, at least for now. This has been an absolutely amazing journey, and I think 10 is a good number to round it off, but it has taught me that I do want to do this kind of stuff more often. This whole Grumpy Community event has been absolutely incredible, and I do wish to do more. But 10 is going to be the last one for now. And thinking of the hybrids, oh, what to do? There's so many options, there have been so many suggestions by the community. Some of the more common suggestions I've been seeing the most are things like dinosaurs. Also a lot of big and scary creatures like monsters and kaijus. I think that'd be very, very interesting to see. And then what would be best to suit a monster or a kaiju? I'm gonna be honest, I would love to see your favorite animal. I know that's gonna be very vague and ambiguous, and that's gonna mean a great big variety of artworks, but I want it to be something that you guys can really pour your heart into. Especially for the final one, I wanna see your favorite animals. So that's going to be a very exciting one. And as always, if you want to take part and submit your own, you can do so either in my Discord server, you can email me directly, you can reply to your submission in the comment section down below, or you can message it to me on Twitter or on DeviantArt, wherever you can reach me and I shall see it. As always, thank you all so very much, and I will see you all next week. Cheers.